my otter friends, welcome back. And not only welcome back for our time together, but welcome back to school. I am so happy that you're in class today and get to be with your friends. Our lesson today is gonna to be all about birds. Eh, and you're probably thinking, Miss Tracy, why are we talking birds? We always talk about food. Well, there's a couple of reasons that I'll explain, but the main thing is, Birds are living things and all living things need to eat. We may eat different things, but we all need to eat. What got me interested in this was actually our lesson that we did together last time. Do you remember what we did? Remember, we talked about citrus, so oranges and lemons and limes and kumquats. We talked about how those are so common in the winter time and they've got lots of vitamin C and they're good for us. But I saw a picture that really had me excited about something else we can do with those citrus rinds. And look what I saw. You can pull out your newsletter if you've got it there. The pictures of look what. These are homemade bird feeders that you can make at home with just a few things. And I put some supplies in your bag for you. We're gonna go over all this a little bit later in the lesson, but I wanted to kind of tell you how I got to even thinking about this it was from our lesson last time. And in the winter time, thinking it's January, it's cold, and there's not as much food around, insects and bugs and nectar from flowers that birds eat a lot of, in the winter time, so what um, we're going, so what, so making the bird uh, feeders at home will help feed some of those birds that do stick around in the winter time, and that'll give them a little extra, uh, a little extra help in 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 feeding themselves during this cold, cold uh, winter. And I also learned that February, which is the next month coming up after January is National Bird Feeding Month, so we're doing it just right on time when the birds need us most. But first, as always, we have a book. And it is a Dr. Seuss style book from a, the Cat in the Hat Learning Library. And it's called Fine Feathered Friends, all about birds. All right, let's see. I love these books because they rhyme. You know I like my rhymes. I'm the cat in the hat here to say a few words about all of your fine feathered friends known as birds. There are millions of birds. I will show some to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Now the birds we will meet are alike in some things. They each have a beak and a tail and two wings. They're covered in feathers and stand on two legs. And when they have babies, they hatch out of eggs. Birds come in all colors, all shapes, and all sizes and live in a world that is full of surprises. Those surprises are. The world's biggest bird is the ostrich, you see. It can stand nine feet tall. Why, that's taller than me. There's a tale told about them I don't understand. Some say these birds hide their heads in the sand, but they couldn't and wouldn't. It's simply not true. It's a thing that no ostrich I know of would do. Like thing one and thing two. <laughs> the bee hummingbird is so tiny and small. It's two inches long. That's the smallest of all. And its wings beat so fast, whoops, and they hum when it flies. And the eggs that it lays are just jelly bean size. A bird gets its name from the simplest things, what it does, how it looks, or the song that it sings. For example, like the flycatcher's name comes as no big surprise because when it's hungry, it likes to catch flies. The chickadee's name for the song, sound of its song, it chickadee dees in the trees all day long. 
and the beautiful blue jay you see flying by has feathers as bright and as blue as the sky. While the spoonbill who lives in a marsh or lagoon is named for its bill, which is shaped like a spoon. And the tailor birds far off in Asia, I've read, sew up their nests, but they never use thread. They shred up thin pieces of dead leaves instead. Mm. And meet the bald eagle. I'm happy to say he's the national bird for the whole USA. Though his name says he's hairless, he's really not bald. He's the symbol of freedom, whatever he's called. When you're looking for birds, you can listen to hear the sounds that they make that are new to your ear. Like the owls who go hoo and the herons who squawk or the dove's gentle coo. That's the way that they talk. Or a parakeet's trill or a guinea hen's cluck, the boom of an ostrich, the quack of a duck, the cry of the loon, or the caw of the crow, or the catbird who meows like some cats that I know. Some birds that you see love to glide through the sky, while other birds stay on the ground and can't fly. Take the New Zealand kiwi, whose name rhymes with peewee. Both he we and she we will never take flight. And these shy little birds like to stay out of sight and search for their food in the dark of the night. Now birds have some habits we may think are strange, but those habits are things that they don't, can't ever change. Like the emperor penguins who live in the snow where there's nothing to build a warm nest with, and so, when a mom lays an egg, it goes up on dad's feet. And until it is hatched, he can't move and can't eat. He must stand very still through each cold, icy storm till the day finally comes when the baby is born. Then it's mom's turn to help to take over and keep an eye on the baby while dad gets some sleep. When birds want to go on a winter vacation, they all take a trip and they call it migration. Wild geese are quite good at this trick as you see. They fly off in a flock in the shape of a V. But the bird up in front gets the wind in his face and must soon take a rest so a friend takes his place. Then the lead goose falls back, has a rest and starts gliding on airwaves his other goose friends are providing. Oh, look at the time why the minutes just flew. We must get you home. I know just what to do. Come on, follow me. You will see what I mean. It's my fine feather all-weather flying machine. There is room for you both, so just hop on in it. You'll wing right back home. You'll be there in a minute. Oh, there's mom, they're home. Dear Dick and Sweet Sally, oh, how was your day? Did you have any fun? Did you learn? Did you play? Please tell me about it. But first, a surprise. I've been to the pet store. Now quick, close your eyes. Oh, I wonder what you got. I bought you a bird. It's a rosamataz. It's a baby all covered in soft, downy fuzz. I don't know much about birds. Do you know who does? Ah, yes, they do, don't they? And that's the end of our story for today. One of my favorites, because I love the rhyming. So, and you can probably find this at your local library too. So I just wanted to show you, since I thought you were gonna be at, ho at home for this lesson, the first craft that we, uh, that I uh, packed in your bag for you is actually one that you can take home with you and do with your family. You'll need a little help from your family. And it includes, I included bird seed for you. And look at some of the things that 
I want to show you because I did it at home already. And look at some of the things, the bird feeders that I, that actually my husband helped me make. And they've all different kinds of versions. We got a pine cone with peanut butter and bird seed. Or remember those citrus rinds? You can scoop out the insides. And we used, we had some leftover chopsticks from a meal we had not too long ago. We use those and the birds can sit there. And there's an orange half. And you know, that's just a toilet paper roll. Or you could do it with a paper towel inside roll. Make it longer or cut it in half. All kinds of choices. And on the newsletter that I sent with, with you in your bag, down here at the bottom, there's a little square, uh, black square box called QR code. And you can even learn about some other types of um, backyard bird feeders that you can make at home from recycled materials like milk jugs or just plastic containers. All different kinds of options that you have. You will need to have your family help you with that, but there's a little short video um, that you can watch to help you decide which ones, or you might wanna make them all, whichever. So that was the craft that you can take home and do with your family, and I did. I wanted to include the bird seed, because not everybody has bird seed sitting around home, but some of these other things you'll, you'll be able to find easily at your home, go on a scavenger hunt. Since you are in class, we're gonna do a whole nother craft. I'm gonna move this this way. Oh, that was fun, there we go. The next craft is one that I included. Um, so you could do in class together. You each have your own. It's another little baggie that I uh, included in your bag. And let me show you what the final result is. It, it's a bird. And it is going to be, you'll get to make your own, everybody will have their own individual bird pencil. <laughs> I thought this is so cute when I saw it, I thought you might enjoy it too. And it's really very simple to make. And I'm gonna do that with you right now to show you. Everybody's got a pencil and they're gonna have their own, you're gonna have your own individual colors and shapes. So you've got your pencil and you've got your bird feather. You can hold those two things together. Now you're gonna have to be patient, take your time. Then you'll take your pipe cleaner and you will hold that. You can do that with your thumb and your forefinger here around the top of your pencil. And then you just go around and around and around and around with your pipe cleaner to make the face of the bird. There we go. So that's how we've got, so far, so good. Then the only other things that we need that are included in, your, in the bag that I sit with you, you'll just need to get some of your glue and you can add, you'll put two little dots. And you know when you're gluing something that sometimes You've got to hold it down. Whatever you're gluing onto something, sometimes you've got to hold it down a little bit. So everybody, you've got your googly eyes. There's one. I'm going to press on it for just a moment. You might want to hold on to it a little bit longer when you're doing it. Make sure it sticks and dries. And then there's the other one. Huh. Oh, did I get it on the glue? There we go. You might want to count to 10 when you're holding those to glue. And then last but certainly not least, the other thing that all birds have, we gotta get a beak. And that's why I included the little yellow strip of paper. And it's not gonna need to be very big, so you can just kinda cut it at an angle like this. Cut a little piece off, and of course we can do a little bit more glue what will we do without our glue, my friends? Not have near as much fun, huh? And we'll glue the beacon. There you go, my friends, look. 
And I'm gonna call mine the Karen Ladies Bird. You can make up your own name for it, your own individual bird. Hope you enjoy doing that in class with your friends. So, my friends, one last thing. We gotta do fun in the kitchen, and I have sent a recipe, which is on the back of your, of the newsletter. It says, no bake, nut, butter, or it could be seed butter, snack balls, and of course the recipe's all there. And one thing, the reason I chose this particular recipe for a couple of reasons, one, it tastes absolutely delicious. Two, it's very fun to make because you get to get your hands into a big bowl and um, get them all messy, which is fine in the kitchen. But you know what? It also includes sunflower seeds. So we were talking about those things as living things. We all need something to eat and something that we share. Birds love sunflowers. You'll find in the bird seed that I sent, there's lots of sunflower seeds that are still in the shell that birds like to eat because that's how they like to eat it with uh, the sunflower seeds with the shell on. However, we as humans, some people eat the shell, but most of the time we eat and look what I, in I included. This is the amount, this is one third cup, which is what you need for your recipe here of sunflower seeds to put into your recipe. Most of the other ingredients are pretty common. I'm hoping you'll have them at home or you can substitute whatever you have at home. But it's a pretty simple recipe. You will need a grown-up's help for part of this. Um, so, but I guarantee you, well, I guarantee you that I love them and I think you will too. Look at these yummy things. And I ended up with chocolate chips, dried cherries, um, all kinds of goodies. And I must say, they are delicious. My husband loves them too. And they freeze well. You can tell your family at home that these, you can put them in the freezer because this recipe makes a whole bunch of them. A very nice, wonderful, uh, healthy, sweet treat for you. So my friends, that's it for today. It was great to be with you. I hope you have fun doing, creating your pencil birds and making your, um, the, your uh, peanut, uh, what is it, the, nut, the snack balls in the kitchen with your family. And of course, also, I hope you enjoy creating your own bird feeders at home. And Remember, you'll be able to use that code to find some different ways to do it. So my friends, again, thank you. So good to see you, uh, be with you again. I will see you soon. Enjoy your time. Bye-bye.